In this video, we're going to take a look how to find the magnitude of a vector. So before we begin and take a look how we actually find the magnitude of a vector, I think it's important to understand what the magnitude represents. And the magnitude of a vector is simply the length of that vector. Okay, it's a very basic point that we're making here, but I think it's important to understand what the magnitude actually represents. So from here now, the next question is, how do we actually find the magnitude of a vector? And the answer to that is to go back to GCSE maths. Because what we're going to do here is use Pythagoras' theorem. So what I've got here is a sketch of the vector A. There's nothing special about this vector. So it's just a general case here. The vector A is equal to xi plus yj. Okay, so that's my i component. That's my j component. Okay, so what we're saying here is we have a change of x in the x direction here. So it just goes x units along like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because what I want to do is form a right angle triangle. So this is how we're going to use Pythagoras here. Okay, so we've got x units along, and then we're going to go y units up. Okay, so if I had to do that to make sense, we go like this. Now clearly my diagram here is far from perfect, but the point I'm trying to show here is that we form a right angle triangle. Okay, if you draw it properly, it would be a right angle triangle. Um, I'm doing it freehand though, so it's not perfect, but that's the point here that we're looking to make. Okay, so I've got this right angle triangle. Now, like we said, the base here is going to be x. That's going to be x there. The height here will be y. So that's going to be y. So I want to find this hypotenuse here of my right angle triangle. Then we just simply use Pythagoras' theorem. So in that case, um, the magnitude here. So how do we denote the magnitude? Well, we use these modulus um, bars like this. Okay, you might not have come across these yet, uh, but we put the vector in between these two bars. And this represents the magnitude. So we're saying the magnitude of the vector a here is equal to Pythagoras' theorem. And that would give us this length here. Okay, so that's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's x squared plus y squared. Okay. And there we have it. That would be the magnitude of the vector a. So if I pick a very general um, or a very basic example here. We've already done the general case. So if I've got the vector a, which is equal to 3i plus 4j. There's nothing special about this vector here that I've picked. Um, the reason I've picked this is because it's a Pythagorean triple. So it's special in that sense, um, but there's nothing actually particularly important about it other than that. So if I want to find the magnitude here again, we put the vector between these two bars. And I just apply um, Pythagoras' theorem again. So it's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared. So in that case, that would be 9 plus 16. So that's 9 plus 16, which would give us the square root of 25. We know the square root of 25 is equal to 5 there. Okay. So that would give us the magnitude of the vector a there when a or the vector a is equal to 3i plus 4j. Now, we also want to understand what a unit vector is. So a unit vector in the direction of a here. So a unit vector, just do this over here. So a unit vector in the direction, so in direction of A is given by, so this would be the vector A here, so let me just do the lines here to represent the vector, divided by the magnitude of the vector A here. Okay. Now sometimes what we do is we use a little bit of notation here to represent this, and we can use this A with a little hat above it like that, A hat. Okay. You might not always see this, but just in case you do come across this, that's what that actually represents. Okay, so if we were to think of this example here, then in that case, that would be 3i plus 4j. That would be the vector a here. So a hat in that case, I should have my vector underneath here as well. That would be um, 3i plus 4j, 3i plus 4j, divided by the magnitude, which is 5, like so. So what I could do is write that as 1 fifth of 3i plus 4j there, okay? Now obviously I could write that in um, column vector form, that would be 3 fifths and 4 fifths, okay? That's completely up to you. Um, but what you will often find is easier to work with um, column vector form rather than working with this component form here of i and j, okay? So I think that's everything we need here. Just a quick point to make that we can extend this in the case for 3D vectors, but we don't come across that until the second year of material. So we'll save that 
um, until then. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of practice questions now. So we've got the first question here. If you are feeling confident enough, pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you would get here. If you're not feeling too confident, then let's take a look at this together now. So what I've got here is the vector a, which is equal to 5i plus 12j. So for part a, I want to find the magnitude of the vector a. Now remember, this is just simply an application of Pythagoras' theorem. So in this case, we're going to take the square root of 5 squared, so 5 squared plus 12 squared, I'm going to take the square root of all of that. So the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. So in that case, 5 squared is 25. That's the square root of 25. 12 squared is 144. So I've got 25 plus 144 here. So in that case, this would be the square root of 169. Square root of 169. And in that case, we're going to get 13 here. Okay. So the magnitude of A, or the magnitude of the vector A, is equal to 13 there. Okay, so that's part A, hopefully nice and easy. Now for part B, we're asked to find a unit vector in the direction of the vector A here. I'm going to use my A hat notation here, like so. So remember, for the unit vector here, this is going to be the vector A divided by the magnitude of the vector A here. Okay, well, we already know the magnitude of A. We wrote that in part A, that's 13. So in this case, it's simply going to be 5i plus 12j all over 13, which in this case we can write that as 1 over 13 times 5i plus 12j. Okay, this looks a little bit neater to write like this. Um, so that would be my personal preferred way to write the solution, but that's completely up to you. Again, you could write that in column um, vector form as well. So you'd get 5 over 13 and then 12 over 13 as well. You could do that as well. Again, it's completely up to you which way you do it. Obviously, if the question asks for it in a certain way, then make sure you had adhere to that and do it in the specified way. Other than that, that would be our solution to part A and to part B there. And taking a look at one more question here to finish with. Again, if you're feeling confident, pause the video now, have a quick go. But if not, let's take a look together now. So what I've got here is two vectors. I've got the vector A and the vector B. So for part A, I just want to find the magnitude of A here, giving our answer in exact form. So the fact that it says in exact form would, su would suggest to me that we're not going to get something that's nice. Um, it's going to be involving thirds here. Okay, so for the magnitude of A, what I'm going to do then is use Pythagoras' theorem here. So we take the square root of 10 squared. So 10 squared plus minus 2 squared. So plus minus 2 squared here. In that case, that's going to be the square root of 100 plus, this would be 4 here. So I'm going to get the square root of 104. And in that case, I could write like this. Um, I'm going to simplify here. So in that case, then, square root of 104. Well, I can factor out here, or not factor out, but split this up into a product of two thirds. But one of those thirds is the square root of 4. So that's the square root of 4 square root of 26 like so and in that case then root 4 we know is equal to 2 so I get 2 root 26 there okay like so and that's our solution to part a so that's part a done for part b then we're to find the magnitude of the vector a minus the vector b so what I need to do first is just evaluate a minus b or the vector a minus the vector b so if we do that first what I'm going to do is use column vector notation here just to make it easy. That's 10 minus 2 minus 2 minus 8, like so. Okay. So what we're going to get here, well, 10 minus 2 is 8. So we get 8 there. And then minus 2 minus minus 8, that's the same as minus 2 plus 8, and that would give me 6 there. Okay, so just be careful with the minus here. It can trip up. Um, those, you know, make a tiny little error there and cause a few issues. But that's what we're going to get there for A minus B. So what I need to do now is find the magnitude of this. So that's the vector A minus the vector B. So therefore, the magnitude of the vector A minus the vector B here, well, that's going to be square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared. So 8 squared is 64. So we get 64. 
6 squared is 36, so 64 plus 36. I get the square root of 100 here. And the square root of 100 we know is equal to 10 there. Okay, so our solution to part B is equal to 10. And now I hope it starts our solution to the second practice question, and that brings us to the end of this video on finding the magnitude of vectors. In the next video, we're going to take a look at position vectors.